moving right along with chapter 3, we're going to look at slope and rate of change in this video. A couple vocabs and we'll get right to it. First is rate of change. This is something uh, that you might have learned last year in pre-algebra, hopefully so, but if not, no big deal. It's a ratio that describes how much one quantity changes in relation to another. So in algebra 1, that'll often be the slope of a line, uh, but it can have to do with lots of different things. For example, miles per hour is a rate of change. It's distance over time, how much your distance changes in time. You could look at a salary in um, your hourly wage, like a minimum wage, $8.75 per hour. There's a change in money over a change in time. So it's just looking at how one variable or quantity changes when another changes. Specifically for algebra 1, though, we have uh, slope. And there's a lot of definitions for slope. And unfortunately, you kind of need to memorize all of them. But luckily, they all, are, they all mean the same thing. They're just different ways of writing it. So conceptually, the slope of a line is the steepness, how steep it is. Just like climbing a hill or a staircase or a ramp, the steeper it is, the larger the value of the slope. An easy way to remember it mathematically is a rise over a run. So if you are if you have a line going uphill, how far up did you go? That's your rise. And how far over did you go? That's your run. So if your rise is 1 and your run is 1, that would be a slope of 1. And that would correspond to a 45 degree angle if the slope equals 1. So anything steeper than a 45 degree angle has a slope larger than 1. Anything shallower than a 45 degree angle has a slope uh, less than 1. If you're going up and to the right, your slope is positive. Uh, or anything like this down would be a negative slope. Downhill when you're going left to right. OK, now let's look more at numerical values of slope. The slope is defined as the change in y over the change in x. This little delta symbol means the change, and you're going to be using this a lot in science as well. So it's the Greek letter delta, and it means change in. So change in y is y2 minus y1, the final value minus the initial value, over delta x, x2 minus x1. And the letter that we use for slope is m. You might have learned last year y equals mx plus b. The m there represents slope. Okay, so lots of different ways to express it, but they all mean the same thing. Problem solving tips. What are you going to do uh, to get these problems correct? The first thing is, for slope, make sure you put the y variable on top and keep the coordinates the same. So let me go back to this slide. The most common mistake is getting these two upside down, putting the x's in the top and the y's in the bottom. And the second most common mistake is getting the twos and the ones mixed up. Now, it's OK to do y1 minus y2 if you also do x1 minus x2, because which point you call point 1 and which point you call point 2 doesn't matter. So as long as you keep the same one in the front and the same one in the back, you'll be OK and keep your y's in the top and your x's in the bottom. Okay. Second uh, problem solving tip, for linear equations the slope or rate of change is a constant. So once you find this value m, that value does not change. Once you know it in one part of the equation, you can keep it the same throughout the entire equation. A couple of special cases. For vertical lines, that means the line is going straight up and down. The slope is undefined because you can't divide by zero. When you look at the rise over the run, if you pick two points on this line, the rise, it definitely does go up, yeah? So that's no problem. Maybe it goes like up two or something, up two. But how far over did it go? It didn't go over at all. So because you have a zero in the denominator, that's how we get the undefined uh, slope. For horizontal lines, the slope is zero. If your line is going side to side, your rise, you didn't go up at all. You just went forward, right? So you went up zero over say 5. 0 divided by 5 is of course 0. So remember the difference between these two. A 0 in the denominator means your slope is undefined and you have a vertical line. A 0 in the numerator means you haven't gone up at all, you've just gone forward, so your slope is 0. All positive slopes go up and to the right, so it could be steep, it could be medium, or it could be shallow, but they all go up and to the right. And negative slopes go down, they could be steep, they could be medium, or they could be shallow, as long as it's below the flat line. So all those are negative slopes going down, all those are positive slopes going up. Remember here would be, for example, your coordinate system. This would be the x-axis, this would be 
the y axis. So anything in this range is positive, anything down here is negative. All right, let's do a couple of examples. Determine if data is linear, find the slope given graphs or points. So first of all, if you have a sequence of data, if your data looks like this, it's clearly not linear. And if your data looks like this, it's clearly linear. So just by looking at a picture, you can tell. Basically, can you draw a straight line through the data points? If so, it's linear. If not, it is not. Second, find slope given the graph or the points. Well, if you're given the equation of a line, and the line looks like this, for example, and you're given this point right here, or you just have a grid marks on a graph, like here, 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 something like that, right? Uh, you might be able to just look and see, okay, let's use uh, slope, or we can use the letter M, slope is m is rise over run okay so rise how far up did I go well to get from here to here I went down one so my rise would be negative one and then I went forward one so that's negative one that's positive one negative one over one is one I could have also for the same one I could have gone down all the way to here that would be negative three right from here one two three negative three but if I do that then I have to go forward one two three so then I have a 3 over a 3, which again reduces, oopsie, oopsie, negative 1 right there, sorry, negative 1. So no matter how you do it, oh, down 1 over 1, down 3 over 3, you can go down, you know, 10 over 10, something like that. The slope is constant, so no matter which two points on the line you pick, if you draw in a triangle and you get your rise and your run, you'll get the slope correctly. What if you're given coordinate points? So say you're given 2, comma, 4, and negative 6, comma, 1. Then we want to get the slope by doing, I'll write my numbers here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now you want to pick which one is your first coordinate, which one is your second coordinate. So I'll call this p1, and I'll call this p2. So y2 is going to be this value, this is the y coordinate of my point number 2, 1, minus y1 is the y coordinate right here, 4, over x2 is the x coordinate of my second point, negative 6, minus, because of the minus sign, x1 is the x1 here, which is a 2. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3, negative 6 minus 2, negative 8. And we want to reduce that, well, not reduce it because it doesn't reduce, but negative over negative is positive for a final answer of 3 eighths. And it would be nice to write m equals so we know it's the slope. Okay, so if we're given these two points, we can calculate the slope using this formula here. That's all there is to it. Um, I'll see you in class where we'll do more examples.